Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where OP crushes the dreams of his cheating girlfriend. Our next Reddit post is from Perpetually Polite. I was always a grade focused student, and I missed out on a lot of high school experiences like having a girlfriend. My senior year, I loosened up and started dating. Eventually, I met a foreign transfer student who shared some common interests with me, and she became my girlfriend after a month of casual dates. Because she grew up mostly outside of the US, she dreamed of going to a real prom. I was stoked to take her and make her dream come true. However, a few weeks before the dance, I found out through friends that she was texting another guy asking if he was down to hook up. She didn't know that I had tutored this guy before and that we were friendly. Once he found out that I was her boyfriend, he showed me her text and told me that nothing happened. I was angry with him, but I was livid with her, and I played it off like I knew nothing. She excitedly bought her dress and made appointments to get her hair and makeup done and kept talking about plans for the dance. The day of the prom, I texted her that I knew about her attempts to cheat on me and that we were done. I went with a close female friend who knew the situation and needed a date. We had a great time and made awesome memories. My ex never got to go to her senior prom because she couldn't get another date last minute and it scarred her emotionally and mentally because she not only got labeled as a cheater at our high school, but her dream never came true. Years later, mutual friends told me that she was extremely bitter about missing out on the epitome of high school dances, but I feel no guilt. Our next Reddit post is from Soul King. So I'm a 15 year old boy and I have an older brother who's 18. He is a massive jerk. I'd rather not get into it in this post, but basically he thinks that I should respect him all the time and treat him like a god. He actually said to my dad once that he should be able to hit me whenever he wants and I shouldn't be able to do anything about it. So thankfully now he doesn't hit me, but we have conflicts every now and then. The Revenge. So we have a PlayStation 4. I mostly play on it, but he plays on it sometimes too. I downloaded this app for PC called Netcut, which lets you control the internet from devices connected to it. So, I enacted my plan. Every single time he tried to play Modern Warfare, I'd let him play for a bit, then turn his internet off on the PS4. Oh, you're having an intense fight, big brother? Whoops, the internet went off. Oh, you're almost about to win a game? Whoops, your internet is gone. Sometimes I'd even ask him while he was lagging, hey, is your internet working? It made me smile each time he raged. And I got some justice for all the times that he was acting like a butthole. Our next Reddit post is from Deleted. So this morning I had to take my puppy to the vet. Nothing serious, just time for his next booster shot. On the way to his vet appointment, I decided to stop for coffee. I'm not a huge Starbucks fan, but the drive through is nice with my puppy in the car, so I decided to go there. The line was super long and going out the entrance a bit. Your typical Karen driving a Ford Explorer packed with kids pulls up behind me and immediately lays on the horn. There's nowhere for me to go because the line is just crazy long, so I don't move. Karen then decides that every time the guy in front of me rolls forward even an inch, she's going to immediately lay on the horn. This goes on for the entire line all the way up to the window. I finally get to the window to pay, but the girl excitedly tells me that the guy in front of me paid for my coffee. In fact, they have a streak now of the past eight people paying for the person behind them, so she asked if I would like to pay for the person behind me. I took my coffee and told the girl, that's really nice of them, but I am not paying for the lady behind me. She's been a dick this whole line, and I drove off. Down in the comments, we have this reply from Catley. You should have just paid for the car behind the Karen. Our next Reddit post is from Brave Danny Flint. So let me start by saying that when I say kids in this story, what I really mean is people in their late teens or early 20s. Two of them had tattoos, so not children, but young adults that still act like kids. I'm a 32-year-old woman who works at a barricade company. The easiest way to describe it is I'm the person who closes down traffic lanes and makes you late for stuff. I had a lane closure that I needed to take off the road. I'm about halfway down when I get a city bus stop with two guys and a girl. They asked me if I could give them a ride so they don't have to take the bus. I said, sorry guys, I can't, I'm working. And I continued closing down the lane. The girl stood up and told me, I effing hate rude, ugly grunts. I reply, congratulations, and just kept doing my job. They kept yelling insults and I just ignored them. When I was about 300 feet away, the yelling stops, and I look back and see the guys had gotten up and started throwing the barricades into the street. 
into the lane that is now open for traffic to drive in. I run over and take the barricades out of the road and said that if they did that again, I would call the cops. Then the girl chimed in, Go ahead, B-word. It's not our fault that you're so stupid that you're forgetting to take them all down. I walk away and they do it again. I call the cops and they said they would be there ASAP. In my experience, that means about an hour. So I walk over and tell them that I called the cops and I stand there so they can't move the barricade again. After about five minutes of me standing there, one of the boys told the girl they were going to get a drink from a nearby convenience store. The boys left and the girl just stared at her phone. Now I'm annoyed. I still have more work to do and it's approaching rush hour. I decide F these kids. I pulled out my pepper spray and I sprayed the handles of the barricades that they kept throwing in the street and then I walked about 50 feet away and waited. The boys came out of the store, put their bags down, grabbed a barricade, and threw them in the street. I saw them wipe their wet hands off on their pants. Because of the bus stop, I couldn't see everything, but about a minute later, one of the boys got up and ran to the convenience store with his hand over his eye, and the other ran in there a second later too. About 10 minutes later when the boys came out of the store, the cops were just showing up, and they both took off sprinting down the street and totally bailed on the girl. I talked to the cops and told them the boys ran off and the girl never touched a barricade, so they were good to go. The girl was crying because her boyfriend left her there. Our next Reddit post is from creepy internet user. I was biking around downtown and got a flat tire, so I went to the nearest shop to get it fixed. They only allowed one person in the store at a time due to COVID, so when it was my turn I went inside and talked to the middle-aged woman at the cash register. To be honest, she wasn't very polite, but I thought nothing of it because not only do I work in retail and know what it's like, but everything is 10 times worse right now due to COVID. So anyways, after tolerating her for a few minutes, she tells me to wait outside until the bike is ready. Cool, no problem. I wait outside for maybe 15 minutes or so before I see my bike get brought up to the cash register. I waited a few more minutes for this lady to invite me back inside, but to no avail. After a few more minutes of waiting, I let myself inside and she said, Excuse me, your bike isn't ready yet. Wait outside until I tell you that it's ready. Cool, no problem. I gave her another 15 minutes of my time before letting myself back inside, and then we had this exchange. Do you not like to listen? I told you to wait outside until your bike is ready. I'm sorry, but I just noticed the repairman bring the bike back up, and I think it's ready. Too bad, it hasn't been fixed yet. This pissed me off, so I just said, okay, thanks for your time, I'll be leaving. She looked a little flustered, but nonetheless held the door open for me as I grabbed my bike, walked outside, and rode away with a free tire change. Our next Reddit post is from Artsy Chicken Nug. I literally found out about this yesterday, and I'm still laughing at my mom's pettiness. My parents have just finished up an incredibly messy divorce due to my dad having severe mental illnesses that he's refused to get treated for, stealing money from my mom, being emotionally and financially abusive, cheating, and a plethora of other stuff. As bad as my dad is, his parents, specifically his mother, are much worse. The garbage my paternal grandmother has put my mom through could be its own post. Or its own novel, to be honest, but let me try to provide some context. We're Indian, but my parents immigrated to America after getting married, and they had my sister and I in the USA. My grandma kicked my mom out of the apartment after mom gave birth to me, threw her passport in her face, and told her to GTFO and go back to India since she thinks she's so smart and independent. Grandma denies that this ever happened. Last year when my grandparents visited, they stole a bunch of valuable stuff from the house to make sure that it wouldn't go to my mom in the divorce. They also got their green card so they could officially move here, and they left behind suitcases full of their clothes. My father and his parents had tried to make my mom miserable for the past 23 years, and now she's finally free. When she sells her house, we can officially go no contact with that entire side of the family. However, we can't do that until the house sells. Now, here comes the petty revenge. My mom was cleaning the house for another house showing when she found my grandparents' suitcases full of clothes. She took all of my grandmother's petticoats, tore them up, and we now use them as bedding for my two guinea pigs. Anyone who's had a guinea pig knows that while they're adorable, they are stinky. And they love to just poop and pee whenever they feel like it. I know it's a tiny revenge, but it makes me so happy to know that my piggies are frolicking amongst that witch's torn petticoats, and when she finally comes back here, she won't have anything to wear. OP, this isn't just petty revenge, it's petticoat revenge. Our next Reddit post is from Erilyn. 
So my husband and I got married about a year and a half ago, and since then I've gained roughly 15 pounds. Nothing crazy, it just adds some hardly noticeable pudge around my tummy area. I didn't think too much of it. Now, I would jokingly say that I was gaining weight because I married him. I know that's not the case. The true culprit is a mix of cooking lots of foods together and me switching to a new birth control. Anyway, six months in, I'm changing into a tank top and some old shorts to do some gardening. And these shorts, which used to fit me like a glove, now barely zipper up and leave me with a tiny muffin top. Naturally, I pout at the realization, turn to my husband and show him. He gets this deer in headlights look as he realizes my dilemma as his brain struggles to think of the least offensive response. Uh, maybe you should work out? We both had a good chuckle at that, and it did motivate me to put some more effort in. I haven't dropped the weight, but I haven't gained any more and I'm good with my body image. But last night came my revenge. My husband came out of our walk-in closet with an armload of pants and threw them on the bed. They don't fit. How? Are they too short? They're too tight around the waist. I held on to them to see if they would fit again, but they still don't, so... A grin breaks across my face and I look up at him. Maybe you should work out. He looked at me for a second, and then he remembered, tried not to smile, and muttered a snickering, Oh my god, as he rolled his eyes and left me to deal with the pants. I made sure to give him half my cheesecake slice later. Our next Reddit post is from Darth Raxius. This happened about three years ago. I had recently graduated college, but I hadn't been able to find a job in my field, which was engineering. So I started looking for another job in the meantime to pay my bills. I got hired by a machine shop as a machine operator. I was working there for about a month when the foreman decided that he had to teach me a lesson about punctuality. I admit that I was late more than I should have been, maybe once a week. But I was almost always less than one minute late, and at the latest, I was like two minutes late. And anyways, I always made sure to make up for it by staying a few minutes after my shift. For context, my job was from 7am to 3.30pm, and I had a 50 minute commute, so traffic was often unpredictable. After he gave me a friendly warning, I started to leave about 5 minutes early to avoid being late. About a week later, there was an accident on the highway that slowed traffic down. I arrived at work and clocked in at 7.03 a.m. I turn around and see the foreman standing there with his hands on his hip. The conversation went like this. You're late. Yeah, I know. There was an accident on the highway. I don't want to hear an excuse. Sorry, I'll make up for it by staying late like I always do. Oh, so now you're trying to justify being late? You don't get to show up for work whenever you feel like it. No, I'm saying that I'll make up for it. Now you're accusing me of not caring when I show up? You know what? Why don't you go home? I'll call you when I decide that I want you back. I said F it and left, not wanting to waste any more of my time on this pointless argument. I called the employment office and told them what happened. They started looking for a new job for me. I got a call from them the next day and they told me the machine shop owner wanted me to come in for a meeting. Cue the petty revenge. I drive over to the machine shop, and while I'm in the parking lot, I make a phone call. I make sure to clock in before hitting into the meeting. As soon as I sit down, the owner's phone rings and he ignores the call. It turns out, this was less of a meeting and more of a chance for the foreman to lecture me about diligence, punctuality, and respect. I get the feeling that he was some kind of ex-military commanding officer. If you expect to get anywhere in life, you must have respect for your superiors. I try to explain myself, mentioning the commute, the accident, making up for lost time at the end of my shift, and how the guys on my floor are always saying that I'm doing a great job, but he's having none of it. He keeps getting angrier and angrier, and he finally decides that I'm a lost cause, and he officially fires me. I look him in the eye with a shit-eating grin on my face, chuckling. You think this is funny? Yep. I turn to the owner and say, hey, you got a phone call from that temp agency earlier, didn't you? Why don't you play the message they left? A lady from the temp agency said, Hi Bill, this is Carol from Employment Solutions. I just received a call from OP saying that he isn't interested in working for your company anymore. If you could send me over the rest of his time cards, we'll start looking for a new machine operator for you. They both looked at me dumbfounded. I say, we've been talking for, let's see, 52 minutes. I checked all my time cards, and it turns out that I've only been late a total of 8 minutes and 32 seconds since I started working here. Since you decided to die on this hill, I thought I'd see how much these precious minutes mean to you. You've wasted 20 times the man hours on this pointless meeting. I hope you're happy. Learn how to pick your battles, corporal. 
I walked out, clocked out, and picked up an unemployment check. I never heard from them again. Man, so I want to talk from a position of privilege for a minute, but as I read these stories, it just feels so alien to me now because as a YouTuber, I work my own schedule. I work as much or as little as I want to, and I work whenever I want to. And it's awesome, don't get me wrong, this is one of the biggest perks of this job, and I just, I just absolutely love having control over my own schedule. If I ever, like, stop being a YouTuber and I had to go back to conventional 9 to 5 jobs where you have to dress up nice and drive into the, into the office and do what your manager says, oh, I, I don't think I could do it. I really genuinely don't. I'm pretty sure I would get fired. This might sound crazy, but I genuinely truly hope that being a YouTuber is the last job that I ever have. Unless, of course, you know, I have a job that I want to pursue just because I'm passionate about it, but like, I just, I can't go back to the workforce, man. After being my own boss, I would be the world's worst employee. That was our slash petty revenge, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, be sure to follow my podcast because I put out new Reddit podcast episodes every single day.